could easily become a landslide. If you make a loud noise, rocks will come falling. Percy shunted back to where a large canvas barrier was used to protect his line from loose rocks. Per Oh, I know it's a rock. I know, but let's just pretend for a minute that it's a seed, all right? We'll just use our imagination. It's a rock. His name is Boulder. But it's a rock. It's, it's so high. I think we should all go up together. Many have tried. Fluttershy, you're the expert on wild creatures. What do you think the dragon will be like? It, it's so, so... Steep. Oh, okay. <gasps> we don't have time for this. What are you doing? I'll need this if I'm going to take her around the mountain another way. That's going to take them forever. <laughs> Don't worry, Twy. We'll be there lickety split. But it's so wide. Come on, Fluttershy. We should be much farther along by now. You could just leap on over. I. I don't know. Okay. Here I go. Up. That's it. You got Almost it. there. Yep. Just don't look down. I know it's a rock! Don't you think I know a rock when I see a rock? I've spent a lot of time around rocks! Oh, you have a pocket pet? Like a tiny mouse? Or a baby bird? Or a trained butterfly? I am! I am! I am! He collected metal from the foundry. Coal from the yards. Flour from the mills. Rock from the quarries. And fuel from the depot. Then he delivered it all to the docks. Next, he collected some empty freight cars. Who's this dirty little engine? cried the freight cars. We want Thomas or Doug. just have to make a run for it, Percy, called his driver. There's going to be an avalanche, wailed Percy. And he was right. Worse still, the track he was on began to crumble. Oh, help, wailed Percy. Then he remembered something he had seen earlier. There's a canvas barrier by the track. That might save us. And he was right. Worse still, the track he was on began to crumble. Oh, help! 
wailed Percy. Then he remembered something he had seen earlier. There's a canvas barrier by the track. That might save us. Hi, I'm Morning Glory. tree. Everything that made that giant tree is already contained inside this tiny little seed. All it needs is some time, a little bit of sunshine and rain, and voila! This rock will be a tree. Seed to tree. You've got to work with me here, all right? Okay. Now, you might not feel like you can do much now, but that's just because, well, you're not a tree yet. You just have to give yourself some time. You're still a seed. <laughs> Practice run number 36A, attempt 7. Success! Oh no. <laughs> Your eyes do not deceive you. I finally invented a selfie sensing camera. It hovers into position whenever it detects a selfie opportunity. I prefer to take selfies myself. Hey. Which beach blanket should be used for the photograph? You mean the white one or the white one? <gasps> This is toasted oat and linen lamb's wool, eggshell, warm frost, pale nimbus, and, well, that one is white, I suppose. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's a rock. I know it's a rock! Don't you think I know a rock when I see a rock? I've spent a lot of time around rocks! His name is Boulder. but wouldn't it have been easier to come in through the door? No time for doors. I've got to protect you from the fire. What fire? But Dalmatian smelled smoke. We both did. Oh. oh, you must have smelled this toast I burned. And such a shame, too. It was my homemade apple corn bread. So there's no danger? Nope, but as long as you're here, how about I fix you both a nice hot breakfast? Mighty kind of you, Barry, but we should be on our way. Someone else might need saving. Uh-oh! Spot's about to fall into the giant hole! Stop, Spot! Hi, Ember. If you want to borrow my shoes, just say so. No, no. I'm trying to save you from falling into this great big hole. <laughs> Thanks for being worried about me, but there's really no danger. See? But how did you do that? I painted it. It's just a picture. <laughs> a cafeteria full of suspects, two detectives, and only one memory stick. If you go back far enough... Everyone. Ugh. Known enemies? All. G good afternoon, ladies. Y you feeling okay? That depends on how well you answer my questions. Has anyone come in complaining of memory problems in the last few weeks? Not that I can recall. You can't recall? <gasps> We're too late. Chew carrot stick? What? Ew. I told you, I don't want your lunch money, and I definitely don't want your lunch. Speak for yourself, Dick. Mm. 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 Word around schools, you know a lot about erasing memory. I erased a ton of memory just this morning. You did? Four terabytes of Quanto Acellarflex memory, to be precise. 
How come no one's ever impressed by that? Is there anything you can tell us about it? Anything at all? I can't tell much from her drawing. Okay. Only that it's falsic intrusive igneous, granular in texture, most likely arranged in an equigranular matrix with scattered biotite mica and amphibole, at least 65% alkali feldspar by volume, with a melting point of 1250 centigrade, plus or minus 10 degrees. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful. Sure. It seems like we've only come up with dead ends, but I mean me in that race. What are you talking about? I can see your memories, and I'm not in them. And exactly how is it you can see our memories, if you don't mind me asking? With this. Oh, it's obviously a cheap knockoff of ours. We got them together. You were there, remember? Why is she still talking to us? Pinkie Pie, what about when I came to your sleepover before the Battle of the Bands? Ha! The closest you've ever come to a party of mine is freshman year when you pretended to be Applejack and texted me. Your party is lamer than a hungry duck in snow boots. Like I'd ever say that. It really hurt my feelings. And wasn't very nice to the ducks, either. That was a long time ago. Twilight, you remember me, right? We've been through so much together. Please. I only met you once, when you yelled at me at the games. Doesn't anyone remember that I've changed? Maybe not anyone. I'll be right back. Don't hurry back, darling. <sighs> Dear Princess Twilight, this is going to sound crazy, but are we friends? Am I nice? Please answer. Are you okay? What's going on? Kind of hard to explain. Might be easier in person. Well, not person, so to speak. Thinking the hardest. I can really think. Hmm. Maybe by accident, they got into the cake I was making with mum. Or maybe they got planted into the pot when I was doing gardening. Or maybe they walked off all on their own. Not there. Not anywhere. Well, we just have to wear some different ones until we find them. <gasps> Look! Now I remember. Mum told me to put my shoes in the cupboard. Oh. Hello, shoes. Hello, Lola. Hello, shoes. I've been looking for you everywhere. <sighs> uh, Lula, you see, Mum was right. She said those shoes are too small for you anyway. No, they're not. There. OK, then. Let's go. Are you sure they're not too small? They are my favourite. And my best. Dad said, you absolutely have to get some new shoes. He said those shoes are definitely too small. I don't need new ones, Charlie. I only like these shoes. Different shoes won't go with my dress that I like to do skipping in. And they won't be as good for all of my dancing. And they won't go with my favourite dressing up costume. Not ever. I don't want any new shoes unless they are exactly like my old shoes, which are extremely very special. There are hundreds of shoes here. But none of them will do all the things I need them to do. They need to be really shiny so I can see my face in them. Uh, ooh, uh, ooh. <laughs> To be bouncy. <laughs> Perfect dude, lots of jumping and bouncing. <laughs> and they need to have a grippy 
climbed any because I have to do climbing up things. Let's say try these. They're red like you wanted. They are red like I wanted, but they are not shiny or bouncy or grippy on the underneath. <laughs> what about these? Mm -mm. You haven't seen them yet, Lola. I know I don't like them, Charlie, because they are not my red shiny shoes. You've got to at least try. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> I just like my shiny red shiny shoes, Charlie. Sorry, Lola, but Dad says you absolutely have to choose now. Or he says he's going to choose a pair for you. I choose my old shoes. I really extremely don't like my new shoes, Charlie. They are not bouncy. They are not grippy in the underneath. They are not shiny. They are also not red too. They are brown shoes and they are buckly. Dad picked these ones specially because he thought you would... Banana! Oh, it's red, it's red! Oh, it's Mum's cone. The sofa hasn't gobbled up my red shoes, Charlie. Oh, don't worry, Lola. We'll definitely find them. Now, where did you go after watching television? Then I went... Hmm. Then I went back to the front door. Sometimes Dad used toffees in his coat. And toffees are really delicious after television. So maybe I left my shoes here. Uh, no. They're not here, too. I'm never, ever going to buy my red shoes again. My sister hates tomatoes. So I say, that's lucky, Lola, because we're not having any of those things. We're not going to eat any peas or carrots or potatoes or mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. There will be no cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans, bananas or oranges. We don't have any apples or rice or cheese. Or fish fingers. And no tomatoes, not ever. And certainly no tomatoes. But why are these carrots there, Charlie? Um, carrots are for rabbits. I don't ever eat carrots. I don't ever eat peas. <laughs> peas are too small and too green. But Lola, those are not peas. Of course they're not. Those are green drops from Greenland. Just nibble one or two. Oh, says 
Lola. Quite tasty.